today I'm going to talk about the latest expansion for Crusader Kings 2, uh, which will teach you to fear the Reaper. The expansion is called The Reaper's Dew, and it is about death, mortality, and the inevitability of our own demise. Now, as most of you know, medieval times were pretty harsh. The average life expectancy wasn't what it is today. But I feel that in Crusader Kings 2, up until this expansion, characters have perhaps lived a little bit too long. So we started by looking at epidemics and diseases, most notably the Black Death, the huge plague that devastated Europe. It has been present in Crusader Kings 2, but from this expansion it's going to be a truly devastating event that can depopulate most of the map. A problem with epidemics in Crusader Kings 2 is that you couldn't really be proactive about it, you couldn't really defend yourself or do anything, but neither did you have to fear them much. A few characters might die, and that was it. But with the Reaper's Dew, you really need to do something in order to protect yourself and your loved ones, your close family, your dynasty, and so on. What you need to do is to shut the gates of your castle at about the time that the epidemic reaches you, you might have to stay in there for a pretty long time, which can lead to all kinds of interesting stuff like paranoia, fear. The population outside might start blaming you for this devastation and, and think that you are a coward. And that's really interesting because you can then find a scapegoat, someone to blame, uh, so that the population doesn't blame you. So you can blame anything from witches to cats. All these things can have different effects, uh, so you have to be a little bit careful about that. But at least there is a way to defend yourself against the devastating plague. Epidemics are also shown on the map now. You can actually see the people burning the corpses and little rats scurrying about. You can hear the lamentation and the wailing of the peasants. Now the flip side, of course, is that provinces can also prosper. If they haven't been hit by war, famine or plague for a long time, they will actually start to have prosperity, which is nice. You can actually see that on the map as well. You can see the little bags of grain popping up. You can see horns of plenty and so on. You can actually be proactive about that. So you can set a kind of prosperity focus in a specific province that you would like to develop further. But you can only do that once per ruler that you play. But in general, your realm might prosper, especially if you have built hospitals, which is a new type of holding that we are introducing in this expansion. It works a little bit like a trade post in that it is a kind of special holding and you can sink money into that by building leper colonies and all kinds of facilities. And this is of course to the benefit of the general populace. It can reduce the risk of epidemics and, and the mortality rates and the risk of depopulation. Epidemics are of course only one phase of death, if you will. There are also all kinds of other diseases where you simply choose to get ill you will now experience all kinds of different symptoms. You can have an annoying cough, you can start getting a fever, general fatigue or any kind of thing really. But you don't know what it is, so in order to find out what ails you, you should employ a court physician, which is a new honorary title in the game. The physician will attempt to diagnose you and then hopefully effectively treat you as well. But it of course depends on the skill of the court physician that you have hired. Results may vary, you know, if he <laughs> tries to drill a hole in your skull, you might get brain damage or you might even show visual disfigurement, which is also something we've added. You can now actually be visibly disfigured and maimed. You can have one eye or if you have things like leprosy, you might start to have to wear a mask so that people don't see that you have lost your nose and parts are falling off. There are also other terrible things that can happen to characters and that you can do to other characters. So we've actually added a few more ways of executing people and to actually get some feedback on doing that. So you can impale someone and you can hear them actually being impaled. These are pretty disturbing sound effects, I have to say, produced by a brilliant audio director, uh, Bjorn Iversen, who really took this uh, task and ran with it. A part of death is, of course, also what happens after. Well, not for you, but for the people you leave behind. So there are new events pertaining to mourning and grief when a loved one dies. And when you yourself get old, you might start looking for ways to live longer, and perhaps even forever. Now, we all know that's not really possible, but people at the time thought it might be. As usual, we are also adding a lot of free stuff with this update that comes along with the expansion. The main thing I would say is the addition of a rule screen where you can customize your own experience by setting the rules of the game before you start.
We have also heavily optimized the game. It runs a lot faster, which I think most people will appreciate, especially in the late game. And the uh, size of save games has been reduced as well. So prepare to bring out your dad on August the 25th. <laughs>